Generating traffic and sales can be a challenge for online merchants. But selling on the Walmart marketplace puts your products in front of millions of customers who shop on walmart.com. And right now, sellers who join Walmart Marketplace can save up to 50% on referral and fulfillment fees for the first 90 days. So get started today. Head over to marketplace.walmart.com slash savings. That's marketplace.walmart.com slash savings. Welcome to E-Commerce Conversations, a weekly podcast focusing on e-commerce topics featuring interviews with prominent people in the e-commerce space. Welcome to E-Commerce Conversations by Practical E-Commerce. My name is Kerry Murdoch. A recap of e-commerce sales for 2011 is the topic of our interview today. We are fortunate to be joined by an e-commerce entrepreneur and pioneer who will share his company's experience. He is Chad Weinman, CEO of Cat5 Commerce, which operates 10 separate e-commerce stores from its base in Missouri. Well, Chad, thank you for your time today. Great to be here. Chad, we are we are interested in visiting with you, uh, a very successful merchant, e-commerce merchant, about the the uh, the success you've had for 2011. Sort of a recap on 2011. Your company, of course, is Cat Five Commerce. You operate ten separate e-commerce stores out of your home base there in Missouri. A uh, very successful company. My first question for you, Chad, is how was 2011 for your company? Uh, 2011 was a positive year for us overall. Um, certainly, from a growth perspective, we achieved uh, a lot of the goals that we had uh, set at the beginning of the year. Um, uh, you know, uh, the economy was uh, not as strong as it could be uh, over the past few years. So I think that uh, you know we've certainly endured those effects. But uh, generally, uh, as far as our expectations were concerned, we we have met our objectives. Were your did you have an increase in sales, sort of same store sales, if I can put it that way, from 2010 to 2011? Yeah, we did enjoy an increase in same store sales uh, by and large. Um, our our company is is focused on growth and revenue uh, beyond anything else. Uh, profitability is really a secondary factor for us at this point. Uh, we have a uh, an eye on the future, and uh, we have uh, a larger business in mind as we kind of develop our processes and, and build out our infrastructure, we're, we're always kind of doing it with uh, uh, with a higher revenue business uh, in the back of our minds, and, and that's really something that uh, we're, we're focused on. Um, you know, six of our ten stores are concentrated in one market, uh, military and public safety, and um, those uh, can kind of trade sales between each, between themselves and cannibalize each other's sales depending on what kind of marketing efforts we're doing. So uh, same store sales can, uh, can fluctuate, but uh, generally, you know, that, that market or that category is definitely up for us through the course of the year. To help our listeners, Chad, sort of understand the size of your company, uh, can you tell us, you know, 2011 approximate gross revenue versus approximate 2010 gross revenue? Yeah, uh, in 2010 we were doing around $8 million in sales um, and in 2011 the, the number is going to be closer to 12. Um, we definitely uh, as most uh, online retailers uh, particularly ones that sell footwear are aware uh, return rates um, are definitely a factor, and so when you say gross revenue, I'm, I'm certainly uh, referring to kind of our pre-return statistics. But um, yeah, you know, we uh, the, 
the, the period between uh, 10 and 11 has probably been one of our more substantial in terms of growth so far, so we're, we're pretty proud of that. That is tremendous growth. <laughs> it looks, it, I mean, from from where we sit, that's a that's a wonderful accomplishment. Congratulations, by the way. Thank you. Well, <laughs> when you're when you're when you're smaller, you know, I think it's easier to to hit those kind of double digit growth figures as you uh, try and participate in new markets and identify opportunities in those. I think that uh, you know it would probably be unrealistic for us to expect uh, to sustain you know forty percent plus growth year over year. Every year uh, would be a lofty goal, but um, but but generally, you know, we've been kind of chugging along since uh, we started, and uh, so far, so good. And you started your, your company started two thousand and four. Am I remembering that correctly? Yeah, two thousand and four in the spring, we launched our original store, which was BDU.com. And, uh, you know, since then we've uh, focused on that market uh, dramatically uh, for a number of years before we got into any, any new markets, which we have uh, more so just this past year. That market being, again, what you said a minute ago, military and law enforcement for the most part. Yeah, military, yep. law enforcement, public safety, which is, which is a pretty broad market, and, and even between military and law enforcement, we, you know, those are certainly different buyers and, and uh, different professions. And even though there's a lot of crossover with suppliers and brands and equipment and clothing, um, you know, we market to those markets independently. We treat them as, as, as separate verticals. And we launched, you know, two flagship superstores this year with the with the, with the purpose of segmenting those two markets where. Previously, our original store, BDU.com, sort of um, was designed to appeal to both, and I guess we felt like we were alienating one or the other. Um, so while, from a business perspective, we kind of grouped them together from an end-user perspective, uh, you know, military law enforcement or public safety are definitely, you know, a different, a different customer for us. So you run... Ten stores there. Your company, Cat Five Commerce. You operate ten stores. Can you describe to our listeners, of course, that are mainly smaller merchants? Can you describe to our listeners sort of how the how that works on the back end, the dy- dy- dynamics of running ten stores in terms of the platform and order fulfillment, accounting systems, that sort of thing. Yes. Yeah, so we have uh, developed a proprietary. Uh, e-commerce platform that allows us to manage all 10 stores uh, from one central point of administration. Uh, so, for example, if we load uh, a pair of pants in a particular brand uh, into the database, uh, we only do that one time, and then we can make that pair of pants available on any of uh, the properties that we operate. So from an efficiency perspective, uh, Certainly, that's ideal. It, it allows us to um, to take the same brands and the same suppliers and market them in different ways, depending on what stores we uh, we have the products uh, you know ending up on. Um, outside of that proprietary platform that's on the front end, on the back end, we use real uh, common and conventional order management tools that are third-party off-the-shelf tools. So. We use Stone Edge's order manager to do back-end order fulfillment and uh, order management and warehouse management. And then we use, you know, uh, Intuit's QuickBooks for, uh, for accounting and, and, and financial record keeping so forth and so forth. So those are pretty common. And, and uh, I think you'll find Stone Edge order manager uh, or something like it. And QuickBooks certainly is, is very ubiquitous uh, as you look around at different e-commerce operations. How many employees do you have there, Chad? Uh, I think we're just over 30 at last count. Um, this has been a, a year of, of hiring for us. Uh, we were nowhere near that just uh, 12 months ago, so uh, the, the office is definitely a little more crowded lately. <laughs> with, the, with the markets that you focus on, uh, public safety, military, law enforcement, there are some others that we're going to talk about here in a sec, but those being the majority of your markets. Uh, is that holiday sales oriented? Is, is the holiday season a big season for your company? It certainly is. The, um, 
you know, the end of September is definitely a big uh, time period for us because it's the government year-end, uh, fiscal government year-end, where they a lot of agencies have to make purchases in order to retain their budgets for the for the following year. Outside of that, uh, just generally speaking, the holidays, November, December, um, are definitely uh, a, 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 a big series of... Uh, um, it, it's a big growth period for us. It's a big uh, influx of revenue for us. And, uh, certainly the stores like running shoes and hiking boots uh, you know, do well in those periods. Uh, but, but even the military law enforcement stores do as well. Um, I think just uh, generally fourth quarter is is where most retailers, uh, you know, see a majority of their revenue. Let's talk about marketing aspects for a sec, Chad. How do you how do you get customers to your sites? Talk to us about that a little bit. Yeah. So uh, there's there's uh, some primary traffic drivers for us, which are SEO and in pay-per-click um, and display ads. Uh, so I guess you can kind of uh, wrap uh, a lot of those up under search engine marketing, you know, display ads, uh, or, you know, which I would, you know, I would include Facebook in there uh, for display or any retargeting efforts for display. Mm-hmm. Um, those can certainly, um, you know, represent a, a percentage of our traffic uh certainly return traffic and repeat visitors and loyal customers that we've been serving since uh, since 2004 and after. Um, you know, we do email marketing, um, which is uh, a, a big component of our sales. It's uh, something that, um, that we invest a lot into um, and that we think is uh, probably one of the better ROIs in, in the business. And, um, you know, social media presence as far as uh, Facebook and Twitter and just kind of engaging with the communities that we participate in and and uh, being part of the conversation and, and trying to capitalize on trends and uh, current events and whatnot. Uh, outside of those, we don't do really all that much traditional, um, you know, print media advertising or cataloging. We've done some of that in the past, but um, I think that we gravitate to digital types types of marketing initiatives because they're easier to track and they're more in line with who we are as a retailer. What about comparison shopping sites? Or not really, not really all that much. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, I mean we do marketplaces, um, you know, eBay, eBay, Amazon, but uh, shopping engines we've we've kind of played with in the past and have had uh, limited success uh, with them and. Um, it seemed like the management of it was maybe not worth uh, the traffic that we were receiving, but you know certainly Google's um, shopping we, um, engine, which is free, we participate in, and I think that's a no-brainer for any online retailer to get involved with. And then uh, affiliate marketing, we've we've avoided uh, really since day one. It's never really been part of our model. Social, you mentioned social there. What is your view on the best way for a merchant uh, to use social? Is it to actually sell products on those platforms? Is it to engage with customers on the platforms? Is it something else? Yeah, I think honestly, you know, we're trying to figure that out still. And I think uh, a lot of other retailers are as well. I, I don't, I'm not sure that there's a clear path or a, a, a real precise value that you can put on social media efforts uh, as far as how they translate, you know, directly to revenue. Um, you know, we're, we're experimenting with it. We, we try different mixes of uh, content that is less sales-oriented to content that is more sales-oriented and, you know, try and gauge uh, how our followers uh, react to it. If nothing else, um, it's an outlet for customers to communicate with us. Uh, maybe they're more comfortable communicating with Facebook or Twitter, um, so they can, you know, we give them that option. Um, certainly, from an SEO perspective and a rankings perspective, uh, uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, schools of thought out there that suggest that the, that, the, that Google and, and, and Yahoo and Bing use. Um, 
uh, social signals to determine, you know, rankings ultimately. So, you know, how popular you are on Facebook or how many times you're mentioned or uh, what kind of engagement you're getting on, on social platforms can, can uh, you know, affect uh, where you're showing up in rankings. And so from that perspective, it's, it's easy for us to uh, justify investing in, in social. But uh, I think it, it allows us to participate in the, in the industry and just kind of uh, make sure that we're keeping aware of, uh, of trends and, and what customers are uh, looking for. Let's change, shift gears, Chad, just for a sec, and talk about another segment of your business, which is RunningShoes.com. When we last spoke, last this in spring of this year, I believe it was, you had just acquired the domain name RunningShoes.com, and you shared with us the purchase price of that, which was seven hundred thousand dollars. That was an interesting conversation we had about your rationale for that purchase. My my question for you is runningshoes dot com. You acquired it this last spring. How's that How's that worked out? Uh, well, I think in general we're as optimistic about it as we ever have been uh, previously. Um, you know, this the purchase price for the domain was pretty high, and uh, you know we've had a lot of conversations about that, and we've talked with a lot of third parties that were kind of interested in that transaction and, and whether or not it you know you can justify the expense. Um, you know, when we bought it, it, it ranked uh, right at number one for the keyword running shoes, which is a massive keyword for our industry. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of value there. Since uh, Google's Panda update and right around that area, uh, it has dropped. It's still in the top ten, but it's more closer toward the, to, toward the middle of the pack on that first page. Um, and it's, you know, kind of to be expected that you're not going to lock down top positions, um, you know, indefinitely without a lot of, a lot of effort and, and momentum. Um, the other transition period for us in, in, in trying to get acclimated with that new industry, with that business, with that market, to get everything migrated over, to forge relationships with the, the partners and the suppliers that are in that, the, that are in that industry took time and I think um, you know we, uh, we we pay the price in terms of revenue and rankings uh, trying to make that transition but you know things have settled down since then and, and we have a really uh, firm business plan and a path and uh, we've learned a lot about the industry and and it's, uh, it's going well it's teaching us a lot about uh, online retail, uh, in the in the sense that you know military law enforcement was much less competitive than, than running shoes and hiking boots are. Uh, we you know we also operate hikingboots.com. So you know when you're going up against competitors like uh, the Sports Authority and REI and uh, you know uh, very well financed uh, businesses and successful companies, uh, they raise the stakes, and so we've had to elevate our game accordingly to compete at that level. And as a result of that, I think it's made us a stronger company and all of our sites have benefited from that challenge. Knowing what you know now, having having gone through what you just described, would you do that transaction again? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I feel like, uh, you know, the, the economy sort of presented us with a very unique opportunity to acquire that domain. Mm-hmm. And uh, I don't think without it that we would have really been in a position to get into uh, athletic footwear, which is a, a very competitive and a very um, controlled market. You know, suppliers, uh, the major keystone suppliers do not open, uh, do not like to open pure play online retailers unless they have a really compelling reason to do so. So, you know, without that uh, premium domain name and w- without a history of business uh, that came along with that domain name and without the ranking that came along with that domain name, uh, I don't know that we would have been able to enter this market. And uh, I feel like we got really lucky and uh, we're probably, you know, I-, I think to recreate what we did and to, to kind of come along and, and say, I want to get into hiking boots, as an online retailer, it would be incredibly difficult, uh, or running shoes, um, just because of, of the people that you have to convince uh, to give you a chance. Uh, so that you know kind of gave us that edge, and uh, I'm not sure that we could recreate it without you know having made that transaction. Chad, let's talk about 2012. 
What are what's the prognosis for you for, for or for your company, Cat Five Commerce, for 2012? Can you tell us about plans or initiatives that you hope to accomplish during the next year? Sure. Uh, 2012, we are committed to really building out the existing 10 properties that we are operating uh, and focusing on making those stores as strong as they can be. Uh, previously, uh, you know, we were pursuing the model of opening a lot of new stores and getting in, getting involved in a lot of new markets, but. Um, you know, that model was based on, frankly, a search engine, Google, that was easier to um, rank for, uh, to, to achieve results in. Google has really um, made it much more difficult to penetrate uh, rankings without having kind of an established history and um, a, a, a recognizable brand. So trying to build a recognizable brand and trying to have an established history uh, is, is, is uh, a lot of work. It, you know, it takes time. And in some cases, there's just really nothing you can do but, but be patient. And um, so as a result of that, uh, we don't feel like continuously opening new stores is really the, the direction we want to keep uh, going in. We instead are looking to build the brands that we already have in our stable and just to uh, make them uh, uh, as successful as we can. Um, fortunately, we feel like the 10 brands that we do operate have a tremendous amount of potential within within each of them, some more than others, and that you know, there's enough uh, work to be done there to, to take us, uh, you know, to revenue levels that, um, you know, that uh, we would ultimately be comfortable with five years from now. We have just another minute or so left today, Chad. Anything else on your mind for our listeners, other e-commerce merchants, mainly smaller than you, smaller than your business, certainly, about 2011 or going into 2012? Sure. Uh, kind of to speak to what I just said, um, I think focusing on on one brand or, you know, uh, a handful of brands and making them um, as successful as you can as an entrepreneur is, you know, the right path forward to build customer loyalty, to build brand recognition and brand equity, to invest in, in your specific niche, whatever that might be, and do it better than anybody else can um, is, is really the, the best way to go and, and make sure that you have a, a value proposition that... Uh, it's some kind of edge that that gives people a reason to gravitate toward your business uh, versus uh, one of your competitors. Um, Mark Zuckerberg recently was interviewed on 60 Minutes, and he said that uh, you know no uh, a division of any company can't compete with a capable entrepreneur, or something like that. Um, <laughs> and I and I subscribe to that wholeheartedly. You know, um, somebody who's passionate and focused and driven to accomplish something in a very specific area is going to be able to do that and be nimble enough and flexible enough uh, to, to outmaneuver, you know, much larger companies. So um, I think that that's uh, something that we take to heart and that any small business, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a, a motto that any small business can live by. Okay. Well, for purposes of our listeners, we've been visiting with Chad Weinman. Chad is the CEO of Cat5 Commerce a very innovative and pioneering e-commerce firm. It was founded in 2004. It's grown to 10 separate e-commerce sites. That website is cat5.com. If you want to review all of Chad's company's stores, that's the word cat, the number 5.com. And Chad Weinman, the CEO of Cat5 Commerce, we thank you for your time today, sir. Great. Thank you for having me. all the time we have for this week's e-commerce conversation. I hope you enjoyed it. Please tune in next week for another new episode.